This week then we are rolling on from the previous episode where we were talking a little bit more, uh, what's the nice word, like philosophically about how training impacts how we think about ourselves and our physiques and what we're going to do is unpack a little bit more this week around how our own philosophies and evolution of our own trainings a little bit have molded changed and shaped over the years and uh, a little bit about why and 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 sort of where that looks like now and, and hopefully that you'll come along for that journey as well I think this is a useful conversation for people to sort of check in on and just every now and again go, why am I doing what I'm doing? So it's kind of like a bigger sort of subject. But I just think, yeah, we'll get into the detail of it. But we have had this conversation before, and that's the thing about philosophy, right? It can change. So we've spoken yeah. about this as where we were, and then as things and life events unfold, like philosophy needs to change to make sure that it's aligned with um, what you're actually sort of like, where, what is bringing you enjoyment and the type of training that you want to do, the results that you want to get, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that one today. But f- before we do that, we're going to say a huge thank you to our podcast sponsors, Spartan Race. We're super excited to be able to be working to work with these guys and to be offering 50 free places to a Spartan Race of your choice. Now, obviously, some of those have already gone, so it's 50 miles, but there is still place available. That's the most important thing. And you can um, join any of the races for free. But what we're trying to do is get a group of us together to take on the one in the Midlands, which is closest to us uh, over the weekend of the 16th, 17th of July. We have signed up in the morning for the 21k Beat is it the beast run, but beast. <laughs> something something big, not through choice. It was more that was the that was the one that that Tim was available for. So we are yeah we're taking on the big one, um, and that I love this is the complete audacity, Jack. I've <laughs> yeah. never done one of these before. We'll just do the biggest. It'll be we'll fine. Take, it's take, not going to be fine. Take it's on the big one. Ball. Well, the other option was like the uh, the European qualifier on the Friday or something. So it was like <laughs> no no that's so we are. Booked on for the 16th of July in the Midlands in the morning. Um, if you want to join us or join any of the events, they start from like 5K, 10K, there's the 21K. You can join any of them. Um, and we've got the opportunity to, for you to join for that for free. Thank you to the podcast sponsors, as Tim said, Spartan. Now, to get the free code, you have to jump through a few little hoops, as you could imagine. You can't just give away free spaces. They're worth about 100 odd quid. Um, is to... Go on your Instagram, show that you are a little bit of social proof that you are actually serious about this thing and you are training for it. And you got to take a photo or a video of you in your training, post that, tag, the important tags are tag Spartan, so at Spartan, and then hashtag Spartan Race. Also, obviously, tag School of Castanets so that we can see it. And ideally, you need to send that to us in a DM if you want to make sure that that gets in. Send your post to us in a DM. We can check you've tagged the right things, and then we will send you your free code that you can then go onto the website, spartanrace.com, and um, get your free place sorted and signed up. Now, I feel, Jacko, that some people may have been put off by the prerequisites that you placed on the entry criteria during previous podcasts. Just because <laughs> you like doing things in speedos doesn't mean that everybody else does. So if you want to come, but you don't like the idea of having to take a photo of you doing some Spartan training in speedos, just take a picture of you going for a run, doing some pull-ups, chucking a spear, you know, anything that also resembles <laughs> like a spear. Anything that feels remotely like a sort of form of training, which is going to help you to get around the 21 kilometer beast i think or five or ten you know, what you do is when you, when easy. you're having your when you're having your dinner if you like set your phone up right and have your like uh you further away and your fork closer to the phone uh, the camera your your fork will look like a massive spear and you could like yeah. pretend to throw that shout out to anyone who's seen four lions <laughs> people who know Martin, he's got a toy gun anyway so but don't let the, uh, don't let the barriers to entry of speedos requirements stop you from getting signed up. It's super easy. Just take a picture of training, send it to us, tag it in, you get a free code. Come and see us at the Midlands Spartan Race on the 16th. We'll be there on the 16th. But if you can't do that date, we're just nice people. Just go and do one. Take, yeah. uh, take the opportunity to commit to Take the challenge. Day. Have some fun. Right. So, with no further delay, Jacko, let's get into a little bit of a philosophical conversation about training, where we're at, where we've been, where we're going. And any of the musings that come And who's to coming? But before you do that, you've got to roll that jingle. Listen. 
listen, players. <laughs> You're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. Rolling in then off the back of that fantastic um, introduction, and obviously we're mentioning the the Spartan race that we're, we're doing, and, and, and thank you to the sponsors for that. Um, but interestingly, those types of Spartan races, those types of training, the Ninja Warriors, of anything that like that is actually when we're talking about this um, philosophy for between the two of us, it incorporates quite a lot of the stuff that we're starting or have been just sort of exploring and pushing into a little bit more recently. In that, you know, the one that, that during the the Spartan race, you're running around like I've been doing a lot more running. You're doing going through loads of obstacles which is going to require you to do a lot of upper body calisthenics based stuff which is going to use a lot of your shoulders which you've been pushing into and so i just think it's it's a nice opportunity for us to like push into some of those things and it's 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 interest for me what's really interesting about the philosophy and how things have gone is that right from the start of even just how we started doing calisthenics was organic and natural it was like this exploration of like oh like doing something a bit different and whatever those few different variations of that starting point was and then like the school calisthenics itself started because we were just doing some stuff that was quite looked quite fun to other people they knew we were coaches and it was like oh could you teach us to do this and and we put on a workshop and literally that is genuinely that's not it sounds like a nice story but that's just literally what happened, right? And it, I think the whole this whole process up until now, and hopefully it continues to do so, is literally just organic and authentic to just what we've been doing and experiencing. Yeah, I think with particularly around philosophy, that it's it's important that we and training is a great example is that we don't just become stuck or fixed or attached to doing something because that's kind of where our our identity is. So I'm always yeah. like a fan of people who are evaluating these things and going, well, I was a bodybuilder and I now do something different. I was a CrossFitter and I now do something different. I think the important thing around that is to understand and to question like, why are you doing those things? And what is it that is coming to mind um, around how you see your body, how you want to use your body, the type of training that you've got, the time availability that you have, access to equipment and, and all these sorts of things. Like These can all be factors in shaping how we train and i think sometimes you start you find people that are doing something because they've always done it even though it's not bringing the the, the the satisfaction or fulfillment that it once did when they first started doing it but don't want to change because they identify as a x like yeah. type of person that does type this type of training yeah and a really interesting one for me on that was when i first started was around um like i when I first started kind of saying i was a bit worried that having spent quite a few years of just doing strength and condition type work and a certain amount of hypertrophy focus within that, that I was going to lose like all my muscle mass because it was body weight training, right? And we get this, like, lose this question loads over the years. Yeah, mm. people are like, oh, I'm a bit worried I'm going to lose all my, all, my, all my hard-earned gains. And I kind of looked at it and was like, well, if I do, I know enough about training to get them back if I just give it three months. And that was a deal that I made myself. It's three months to try something different. And if I don't like it, I can always go back to what I was doing before. Um, and that was kind of, that was a long time ago, seven, eight years ago, maybe. And I kind of never really went back to that exclusively that type of training, but things have moved and changed over the, the last kind of like five years and particularly the last year. And it may be Jacko that a few eyebrows have been raised when people found out that I've actually joined a CrossFit box. And that was kind of the, there's some reasons as to why, which we can delve into in a little bit yeah. as to what I was looking for, because of where I was at with my training and my lifestyle. You got anything to add on that? Oh, sorry. I thought, <laughs> thought it just, I thought you'd frozen. Yeah, no, there's, I left, I left, I left a, a, a contemplative pause. Yeah, no, to... it, it, it shocked me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's something that I, or that strikes a chord with me there. And, one is that there's a guy, um, interestingly, I tried to get him on the podcast because he'd be a good guest, but he's quite a big cheese. So I got a um, thanks right now for applying to get Peter Crone on the podcast. Um, he's a little busy writing his book at the moment. Um, you know, come come back in a, in a few months maybe and we'll see what we can do. Anyways, a, a guy called Peter Crone and he'd probably um, 
reframe the wording of you know like that that identity is that like i used to, and i love what you're saying and, and it's like i used to be a so and so for me it was like i used to be a rugby player and it was like that then identity and that's a bit of a problem and you can't do that thing anymore or if you used to be a bodybuilder um and then you want to train a different way and you've put your identity in that then it's like ah that's there's a bit more of challenging than rather than just going i did bodybuilding style training but i'm just me and i'm now going to do a little bit of this other type of training and then it's less we're less attached and it's it's just a very subtle change in words and some people be like well it makes no difference what you say like whereas yeah he, th- this guy peter crone um would say that the words that you, we say to ourselves or ourselves are quite quite powerful and some people that will resonate with and others it won't certainly for me that identity of like saying i am this thing um yeah rather than just being like i played rugby i did this sport um that for me is quite important yeah i've got a question um right now let's just put it out on the table would you say that you still train calisthenics in comparison to how you like what and what does that look like now yes compared to what it was before because that has changed definitely for me so for me do i do calisthenics yeah 100 percent because I use very, if you, it depends, like how, it, how are we defining calisthenics? If we're talking about body weight training, the, I still don't have like weights and a, and a barbell or anything. I use, do I use some equipment? Yes. Did I use equipment before? Yeah. So have I got a weighted vest and a sandbag? Yes. Have I got Olympic rings? Uh, is most of my training purely literally moving my own body weight? Yes. Uh, is that what it was like when I moved into doing calisthenics before? Yeah. Um, am I doing more running than I used to do? Yes. But I only literally probably run like twice a week or something. I think that probably if someone follows my personal account, you might be like, oh, you know, you just this perception of like, you see what things are people doing. You're like, oh, crikey, that person must. It's like, well, no, it's just that you've only seen two posts that I did and they both happen to be running. And the rest of the time I wasn't running. It's not like I'm spending all my day doing that. Um, and uh but the biggest change for me is like am i now um not just like aimlessly is the wrong word but am i just sort of um am i obsessed with doing harder and harder uh, and cooler things no but was i before um yes and in a in a great way it was just a really good time for me in shifting mentally from a place around like why the hell am i doing this training once i'd finished rugby like i, re- I remember literally remember being in the gym looking at myself in the mirror going like what are you doing why are you doing it and calisthenics gave me this like new love of life for training again and at that point i was you know, kind of a fair bit younger and like really motivated to like do some cooler stuff and some harder stuff um Whereas my body is just yearning for something a little bit different now. So now it's more sort of movement based rather than, I'd call it like movement based than just sort of like strength calisthenics based. I still like doing, you know, still doing pull ups and some, and some strength stuff, but it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more jaw, strength endurance based. And it's a little bit more like mobility based. Like I'm still, um, I get the over, here you go, the overriding thing for me is, I'm learning about my body. That's what I feel like I'm doing when I'm training. I'm, I'm like, what? Trying to fight. Like, what is, what is restricting? What is weak? What is tight? What needs strength? Like, and just why can't I move like that? When I go into this pattern, okay, that feels different on this side to that side. I'm far more aware of like what's going on, and and that's just where it is now. Is it going to change in the future? Well, history says it will change because it's if you look back in history, like it's changed over time. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I Where think, are you? I think it's I, I, what, from what you're saying. I, 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 it reminds you know. I can never. It, remi- that, it reminds me. It reminds me. You always like. That it reminds me. It reminds me. No, I'm doing it. Um, of our best friend, actually, that we've only oh. ever spoken to once, Mike Fitch. Uh, yes. We are best friends, though. Great friend. Um, I was but he was text saying, like, he was. He was um, he was somebody who I, whose videos I first watched when we were starting to get into calisthenics. And when we had him on the podcast a while back, he was like, yeah, my sessions, kind of, I still kind of keep a few of these things spinning, but not really kind of pushing on with like hardcore um, chasing new movements and stuff. And, and he had also gone to that stage of like a significant amount of investment in that type of training. 
And then as it also kind of changed, evolved, grown, matured, got older, kind of just found that his natural, the things that he wanted to do within a training week could just probably simplify down a little bit. Yeah. And I, I definitely resonate with that. Like for me personally, so I now train at a CrossFit box and I'm doing CrossFit sessions and interval based sessions and, and kind of like mixing it back into that more of a, I suppose I say, I call strength and conditioning environment. I don't want to call con- CrossFit strength and conditioning, which might again, raise a few eyebrows, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get yourself in trouble. Hole. I know. Um, I cro- yeah, let's put it. It's Look, pot- it, in CrossFit, you do strength work and you are doing conditioning work, and yeah, it's, these know, things are just like it's largely like I, for me. One, okay, here's segue. Let's just get change lanes quickly. Um, I'm gonna get myself into trouble. Strength and conditioning <laughs> type training, to me, my interpretation of it is structured and planned and progressive. And now the the, the thing with with CrossFit, and I'm speaking, this is, comes from a place of love because I'm really enjoying training there, but it can be a little bit chaotic. It can be a little bit of everything all over the place and doesn't necessarily always kind of like stick together. So, and that's partly because like, I'd, if you, let's say give the boxers the benefit of the doubt, if I went every day and followed all the programs, then I would probably, there might be some pattern to it. But what most people do is they drop it in and out different times of the day, different days of the week. So they just kind of like, it's just hit with whatever it is that day. Um, so that's kind of, and the strength and conditioning for me would be like, what are we doing for the next four to six weeks? And then how does that block fit into the next block? And there is some of that within CrossFit, but not as yeah. much anyway. Different conversation. So uh, I can't remember what I was talking about now, but it just the the idea of, of going into, my training now looks like a little bit more like that, kind of like those barbells involved. But my major kind of focus within CrossFit is actually sort of how good can I get at the gymnastics elements and put that in inverted commas because it's not really gymnastics, it's calisthenics. Um, but the pull-up type work, the muscle-up type work, there's some handstand kind of elements and handstand push-ups and that sort of stuff. So th- within that, my training is now like if you ask me to go and do like a fr- open gym, just go and do a training session, you're going to see that 90% of my upper body stuff is still body weight based. But I'm also doing more lower body strength based work. I might throw some Olympic lifts in there. But that's kind of it. So I've just, and I've always said, like, this is kind of what I said before, like, I've been critical of CrossFit in the past, and I'm still cr- critical of some components of CrossFit. I am look at myself as I go into that environment and go, I know enough about training in my body to manage that chaos. I don't think that's the case for everybody who walks into a CrossFit box, potentially. Mm. Another conversation. But there's things I love about CrossFit in that I can go down there and I do, you do kind of, it has pushed me back into a more complete approach to my training. And I said for a long time, even when we were like hard into calisthenics, um, that I always thought that lower body training needed additional weight. I was like, you can only go so far from a lower body perspective with body weight alone. And I yeah. stand by that. So that now my training has now got that element back in. And this is where CrossFit, I'm going to plug this gap now, has kind of fitted into where I'm at with my training is that it, it suits the needs of where I'm at right now. So during lockdown, I got really like tired of being in the same four walls and training at home. I wanted to go somewhere so I could leave the house, get a different environment, see some different people, be around other people, have some sense of community, which I was lacking from, from training at home. I was also aware that like going after the harder skills, I'd got my calisthenics to a point where I'd kind of got the, some decent things nailed down. But to go after 90 degree handstand push-ups or some really kind of <clears throat> more difficult planche progressions, for example, it was taking up so much of my training time because it was just hard kind of skill-based work mm. that if I had an hour in a really busy day, I could spend a lot of it on skill and therefore not to do a huge amount of just basic strength work and not to do any conditioning type work and, I was, and, and not get the lower body stuff in. So I felt like there was a lot of elements that I wanted to be able to include in my training week that I couldn't do whilst I was going hard after some skills. And some people might have a better training balance, like let's not get into the details of how many days a week and how long are your sessions. Like I am a time poor person at the moment, so my, my workouts need to be short, effective, and they need to be giving me a bit of a dose of everything that I want. And then you can come back on this, Jack, but my final point yeah. is, as I've moved, and this is going to sound ridiculous to some people listening to it, but I'm going to put it out there. As <laughs> I've moved from 30 to now 41, let's say, or 33 or 32 when we started calisthenics, the things that I think are important are different to when I started. When we started calisthenics, it was like a rite of passage. Look at all this cool stuff. I need to be able to do a human flag, handstand, muscle up. And that was important because we were then 
showcasing it and teaching it and educating people. Now I've got to a certain level of competency, I can still do those things, but I don't feel the need to go and start continually chasing for new skills. And I'm testing and pushing myself in other areas which I've honestly neglected for a while. So around fitness, around lower body strength, around can I put some of this stuff together? And the challenge that I've set myself with in CrossFit is can I do my gymnastics elements, my calisthenics elements strict? So I don't want to do kipping pull-ups. That's difficult because when you're in a metabolic type session, kipping pull-ups are way easier to get the volumes that are prescribed in the workout than it is to get them doing strict. So I've now got to build a much bigger base so that I can do the strict volume when tired. And it is an animal, right? Like I've done a workout before where it was like hard out, like I think it was like a 500 meter row, like balls to the wall into like bodyweight squats, into crunches, into push-ups, into pull-ups. And the pull-ups was like five or 10 at the end. It wasn't even a lot. But you've done that amount of capacity. <laughs> like I just absolutely like broken. I was like doing them in, in like singles and doubles. So it's like, how do I train that component? So that's now the challenge of where I'm at. So is it calisthenics? Yes, in that the most of my upper body training is still body weight based. Is it calisthenics because I'm not kind of pushing on towards harder and harder kind of skill progressions? I still think so. It's just, I have to think about how I'm spending my training time to give me what I want. And my philosophy is more about at 40, what does the next 10, 20, 30 years look like? I, I think for me personally, the life that I want to live, being a more of a generalist is going to be more helpful for me than being a specialist. Now, if I was 20, I could afford to invest 10 mm. years in becoming a specialist in calisthenics. That will put me now, another 10 years of that will put me at 50. Cool tricks, no metabolic kind of conditioning. What's that say for your heart health? All that sort of stuff. Yeah. And this is why like, I'm not training particularly for this Spartan race. I'm going to do no specific running. Like, I don't know if I could run 21 kilometers on a Spartan race. It might be absolutely excruciatingly difficult. But I know that if I'm going to put some metabolic stuff in there and I've got some lower body strength and my gymnastics and calisthenics style of the CrossFit workouts is on point, then I've got a decent, like, it'll be all right. I'll get around yeah. it. I might not enjoy it, but I'll get around it. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy the people there. Also, I'm being, I'm being satirical. Um, but yeah, that's like, I don't want people to think, oh, no, they've, they've turned coats. They've changed. They used to be so cool. Like, that's <laughs> just honesty, and this is kind of like this cool is life, too. right? Yeah. I no, I, I think it comes, you made a great point right at the start about just going, understanding for, for all of us, sort of thinking about like takeaways for the, for the podcast understanding why you're doing what you're doing and i think the other thing that comes out of it for me is like giving yourself permission to explore other things that's what i hope that people take from from this podcast as we just sort of sharing honestly how things have changed for us and as your your why and your reasons for doing it will change based on like the period of of life that you're in in life circumstances and and giving yourself to uh, realizing for one you're not that, that your identity is not your identity is in who you are not in the training or sport that you play or whatever and then and to give yourself that permission to that to explore different things um and yeah that i think it's a, i think it's a natural progression of as we get older i've joined the 40 club and like what's important now is like yeah 100 percent. It, it's it's around you know the the, the our, our pillars with the scorecast and it's the name of the podcast like movement strength and play like moving well, getting strong and having fun, like those things are, those things are at play in, in what we're doing. And there's an element for, for, for me, and I know you've described it as well, there's an element for you, and I think there'll be an element for a lot of the people listening that we want to be able to keep moving, being strong and having fun as we get older. And as you get older, you sort of appreciate more that like, I still feel 20, but I do appreciate that I am getting older and that as I get older, it's important that I can still do stuff. You know, I put it sort of thinking about this, you, whatever someone sort of thinks about in terms of like who you are and stuff and like uh, people having a soul or a spirit or whatever you want to describe it, like what makes you, you is like inside of you. It's not like the stuff on the outside, but your opportunity to explore and engage in the world happens through your body in that you like, you've got to use it to get yourself around. And when you 
can't use that thing or it's not working that well for you anymore because you've sort of uh, used and, ab and abused it, then that's going to impact like your experience of interacting with this world and people around you. And so looking after and taking care of that thing so that you can, like that's the, that's where my head's at in terms of, in terms of my training. And there's like, a, it's weird. It's like a big shift in mindset, but it's, it almost doesn't feel like that because it happened over such a long period of time. It's just like really gradually. And then you're like, hold on, I can really think about training differently now to what I used to. Mm. But it doesn't feel like you suddenly woke up one day and changed your thoughts. Yeah, and I think one thing that's consistent within it, for, and this will probably be for a lot of people that are, are resonating with this, <clears throat> is like both of us have, it's continually looking for some way to be a beginner or to find the challenge <laughs> in something. So for you to go and do what you're doing now, like you would have like, come out of rugby gone, you'd never run anywhere near the distances that you're running now and would never yeah. wanted to but you found enjoyment in the in the process yeah. of looking working towards something which you've now found enjoyment out of one thing i liked about crossfit was having been in a strength and conditioning environment and if i surround myself with people like me i move pretty well like and within calisthenics i'm okay at it I go into CrossFit and I'm like absolute toilet, like compared to everybody else. I get my backside handed to me on a regular basis. Um, one by the workout and two by other people who are just older, seemingly less well conditioned, haven't got the training background that I've got, but they've got more context and more experience of doing that thing. So I kind of like that. I like being in an environment where I'm like, I'm not actually this good, that good at this because it pushes me on to then go and find, to chase that discomfort and to... Yeah, so the, 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 I think the, the progression within calisthenics was often around, like, can I learn this really hard thing that I can't currently do from a skill perspective? I'm now doing the same thing. It's like, can I learn this really hard thing by sticking all of these components together? And and this is where kind of the strength and conditioning background and the calisthenics comes in. Can I do all of those whilst moving well, which is not what you always see within CrossFit? Yeah. So I want to just, the, the, point, the takeaway point from me really is to, Think about your philosophy. And I, I've got like a few clients that I'm working with now when they're, they're in like a CrossFit environment, but it's, they're not, they know they're not moving well. They've got some shoulder pain or whatever it might be. And I just, I want to encourage people to go, just because you do that thing, don't take the path of least resistance. Like think about within that, what is the limiting factor? And it's okay for you to change your philosophy. So you go, I'm going to stop doing as much of this so that I can give myself the opportunity to do more of that because that's what's actually going to make me a better mover, better like human, improve my movement, human movement system. So yeah. that could be that your mobility is like sucks, all right? but it's not going to get better by doing what you're currently doing because you, otherwise it would have done it by itself. So <laughs> yeah. you might need to shift some pieces around the board a little bit to create some more time to do more mobility. For me, it's like I could train at home and get quite good at the skills but with now working at home and the lockdown environment, we don't go to the office or train or whatever. Like I can literally quite easily go a day in my house and do 1,500 paces. Like, and, and, and my skill session would have like barely elevated my heart rate. So how good is that for me from a health perspective? Like not great. So the path of, le of, the, the, the path of least resistance might have been just going, oh, I'm just going to keep doing it because that's what I do. The harder mm. thing is to go, let's go and accept yeah. that I'm not very good at this. I'm not very, people might not be very mobile. So go and, go and expose those weaknesses and go and really have to confront it. Come on like one of the mobility courses that you and George have done and go, gosh, I'm awful at this. That's a good thing. Like <laughs> yeah. identifying what the weak links are in your kinetic chain or in your human movement system and shaping your training around those. Like that's a positive because you are then going to be upgrading the system the whole time. And I promise what happened is you'll peel back the layers and other things will get worse. Like things will change. You might lose some strength. You might lose some fitness. Okay, how do I bring those things back in? We can't have, like, you can't be specialist and, and, and very few people can be, like, awesome at everything. There's always going to be some compromise. And I think from where I'm at in the stage of my life that I'm at with the young family and, and the pressures of everything else, work and, and that sort of thing, I'm really enjoying this middle ground of kind of, like, I've still got a real kind of heart for body weight training. I love it. And as even being in a gym, I'm not looking at the bench press going, I really fancy bench. Like, I don't. Yeah. I'd rather do planche push-ups because um, I feel that better from a both physical, mental perspective. I just enjoy that, that challenge of calisthenics. But it's a simplified version of it where I've now got time for other things as well to stick into that so that I've got this more rounded approach to my training. Yeah. Nice. Haven't we come far, Timbo? Yes, some, and, and in some areas, gone backwards. 
<laughs> I'm interested to know what this convers we this com this conversation in ten years time when we're fifty. That 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 yeah, what's, I know. I what does that doing. what that looks like? Will be interesting. If, It'll be interesting. Yeah, I th- yeah I don't know. Uh, I think probably more general. I think yeah. it, it definitely for me is kind of going like what 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 does. So one of the things like hitting turning four and forty one now, forty two in November. And my little girl is is just turned. Well, she's just past one years old. And like, well, okay. So when, I, when she's forty, when she's the same age as me, I'm if I'm still here, which I hope I am, I'm going to be eighty years old. Like, what do I want to be able to do with her when I'm eighty? And I once met a guy who was eighty when I was was a square kid, a scuba diving instructor, and he was like the best eighty year old I've ever met. He was like loving life, like just was the, was just amazing. And I was like, that's my role model. Because he like he rocked up for his 80th birthday present to come and do a scuba diving thing with me. <laughs> Forgot his false teeth, like his regulator <laughs> fell out of his mouth. He was like an ex kind of paratrooper in the World War Two. Like was still trading in investments in Southeast Asia, and like just this guy was like, like full of life. He rocked up like so. I sent him off to get changed into his wetsuit. It was a one-on-one session. I was like, Stan, um, Sam, go and get go and get your, your, your wetsuit on. Do you need do you need to give you one? He's like, no, no, don't worry, I've got one. So I thought he was going to come back out with this like 1950s style. I think like James Bond, like the nappy one that comes underneath. He's got no legs on it. It's just like long sleeves and like the, the brace underneath the, the uh, between your legs. Came out with this like beautiful rip curl wetsuit. And I was like, this guy's just got like, just got it. Um, and I think that's it. Like, how do you achieve those sorts of things where you can say yes more as you get older because you just have the capacity? Yeah. Yes, I want to go snowboarding. Yes, I want to climb that mountain. Yes, let's go swimming. Like, yeah, could be anything. And I think you get that from being that, that generalist approach. But you, we've talked about this before. Your physical pension. What do you want to do then? And what do you need now? And there's got to be some kind of like trade off and balance between those two things as how you structure your training and. That philosophy, if you maintain that philosophy, if you resonate with what you're saying, your training will naturally morph and evolve because your mm. philosophy continues to change based on where you are in your stage of life and what you need at that point. Yeah, yeah. And I think that uh, uh, rightly named the Movement Strength and Play podcast because I don't, it's like those those three things I feel like will always be there. Movement, strength and play. Um yeah, you can. You can. I feel like I can hang my hat on yeah, those things. It's just a, it's play for me. The way that's kind of yeah. Yeah, if you call just doing burpees and running twenty one k fun, then yeah, of course it's play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hundred um, percent. So, any thoughts on this one, guys? This is a big subject, so we'd be really interested to hear what you think. So, feel mm. free to drop us a DM. Um, on, on Instagram is our preferred platform or you can send us an email tim at schoolofcalisthenics.com or david at schoolofcalisthenics.com David and Jack are the same person if you're new to the show um, and yeah we'll just give us some ideas because I think it's just these can sometimes be contemplative reflective opportunities to share some thoughts and if you have to write yeah. it down and tell us what it is that means you've gone through the process of thinking about it and it's not just training it's an important part of our life because what we do from a physical perspective has such a big impact and everything else. So why not think about the philosophy of it as we think about the philosophy of other things in life? Deep, yeah. Jacko. Deep. Deep. No, you got to go deep. What's the point in staying on the surface? Deep is where the gold is. No. Exactly. Um, right, let's sign off. Do you want to sign us off today? I, uh, I would love to, Timbo. So thank you, everyone, uh, for listening. Keep exploring your physical potential with movement, strength, and play. Class dismissed.